Hello and welcome back to another video, another part of my 100 days of typography series that I'm working on. Uh, and I did three different J's today, just like last time. Um, and so I'm getting started on my very first J, which is clouds. Because, you know, clouds could be in a variety of formations and I thought, why not a J? Uh, again, I am always accepting ideas because I have to do a lot of these. Um, so if you have any ideas for anything you'd like to see turned into a J, I can give it my best shot. Leave it in the comments down below and I'll try it out. But I'm pretty happy with how this J turned out. It was a uh, pretty big struggle while I was working on it. And part of that is just because, you know, clouds are a very specific shape. And while a lot of the time clouds do have that kind of J shape, they're not usually that tall. So I kind of had to like work it out in my head and resolve the height of the J with how wide it looks. So I think in the end I managed to come up with a good compromise for how tall versus how wide it is. And I think it really does look like a J. Um... Originally, I wasn't really planning on having it look super realistic, but I think it did sort of lean that way in the end. Which I don't hate, you know? <laughs> this 100 days of J thing so far has been kind of a learning experience in how to draw different things, things I hadn't really considered. Like, I draw clouds. I, I have drawn clouds, but never, like, as a focus of what I'm doing. So it was interesting to have to think about, like, this is... A really soft looking thing but clouds aren't like blurry necessarily or washed out so <laughs> I had to think about it like as well and also this color that I'm using for I think I end up changing both the color of the thing one of them is too much of like a gray color and that's not quite what I needed I needed more like a light blue um, and I think I also got the color of the sky a little bit wrong, but we're just gonna ignore that because, because I say so. <laughs> I didn't even have to bring it up, but I did because I hold myself accountable like a, a good person. But see, I went in and I changed the color of that gray to something still desaturated, but slightly more blue than the kind of green gray it was before. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Sometimes colors are weird, you know? Um, so at this point, I feel like I had a pretty good grasp on where the light and dark was, but I wanted to somehow make it look a little bit more blended out, a little bit more natural looking. So I tried the wet blender at first and it wasn't quite the look I was going for. Um, so I tried out a smudge tool then and eventually I started using the wet mixer brush, which uh, I don't, you know, always love using the wet mixer, and I, I do think it turned this a little bit muddy, but I don't hate the way it turned out either. I think it was uh, a good brush for softening things up, for, you know, changing the color up a little bit, for mixing the shadows in well. Um, so yeah, it's not like my favorite look in the world, but I do think the overall effect that I got in the end wasn't awful with this brush. So. That was my solution for what I was doing. Uh, I decided that I didn't really like the barrier between the two different shading uh, at the bottom there, so I wanted to add something to kind of brighten it up. Uh, so I, I added a little line to make it look more like a three-dimensional cloud kind of thing. And at this point, I'm just really working to make it look soft and fluffy, like clouds, you know? <laughs> um, and then I a smudge tool and I smudged out the edges of the cloud. Uh, and I think that really makes it look like soft, like it's in the distance and kind of like it's almost moving because, you know, clouds are moving and stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it could have looked a little bit more J-like, but I think if you know what you're looking for, it's there. Uh, the second idea I had was I wanted to draw a cityscape kind of thing. And my first idea was like a neon-y, neon -y? Wow, that is a weird thing to say. A neon-esque, that's probably better, city with like bright pinks, bright greens, bright blues. But the last one took me longer than I expected. So I simplified this one way down 
and was just looking at a drawing of a cityscape that someone else had done and thinking about how I could transform it into a J. Um, so I ended up just, you know, using this really tall building and then the really short buildings on the side to try and make it look like a J. And I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out as well. It's a lot more geometric, a lot more simple than the last one. And I don't use hardly any shading at all with this one. Uh, I mostly just use three or four colors to create depth without, you know, doing any intense shading. Um, because I wanted to try something like that out, you know? This 100 Days of Jade thing is like all about me trying things out, things that I've never done, things that I wouldn't usually do, things that I might not necessarily like doing, but uh, good things to try nonetheless. I had a lot of trouble when I took away this line art because I was like, oh, I'll just fill it in and then take away the line art. The line art was really thick and left these white lines behind and I couldn't color them in because they were all connected to each other. So that was frustrating. Uh, and I tried, you know, using a clipping mask, but that just didn't look right. So I just ended up putting a layer on top and drawing on top. It was frustrating, but I mean, what am I going to do, right? I'm not complaining about it. <laughs> So I wanted to really make this look geometric. There's not a lot of round shapes in here. I think there's only two uh, because I usually draw like pretty flowy. Um, so having it be geometric was something that was just like totally different. I was like, okay, this is crazy. I also put these little light windows in. Uh, they're not perfect, but they're not supposed to be. They're just supposed to give the indication that these buildings have lights in them. Which I think they do, you know? I didn't want it to be agonizing over how straight the line placement of the windows were. I really like it. I feel like it gives off a really nice vibe. A very specific kind of feeling. Almost dreamy. Um, and then I wanted to make it at night. So I, I do this light sky at first and I'm like, you know what? No, I don't want to do that. And then just because it felt like it was lacking something, I kind of wanted to put like uh, some sort of water below it. So that's what I did. I took the image and I flipped it. I smudged out the edges. I have to do it a couple times because I keep smudging it wrong. But I smudged out the edges and I uh, blurred it a little bit so it looks like it's on the surface of the water. And I really like it. I tried to add, you know, some lines on top to make it look like water, but that didn't look great. It kind of looks like a reflection or a lake or something like that. I'm just, I really like the way it looks, so. <laughs> That's number two done here. Um, the last one, I did a lot of work on the sketch. It took me a long time, uh, but I wasn't recording that. So <laughs> whatever, right? <laughs> but I really wanted to do, in my head, it was like waves, but every way I was picturing waves was like the opposite of the direction of a J. So I ended up doing like this almost oriental inspired kind of wave thing. Um, <laughs> and I really like it. Uh, this one isn't colored, unlike the other two. So it's just a lot of line work. Um, and it was interesting to try and like do something that was very repetitive, but also detailed. I, I hate working on patterns and tiny details. I hate it so much, but I've done a couple projects now where I've worked on little tiny things just because I want to challenge myself. And I really like the way this turned out, even though while I was doing it, especially sketching, I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? I hate it so much. <laughs> but in, in the end, I mean, you know, it's useful to learn things you don't like. That's why people, a lot of people draw still lifes or nude figure drawing or whatever. You might not like learning those things, but they are helpful. So <laughs> learning a bit about patterns and also learning a little bit about letting go into how some of these lines in between weren't perfectly distanced apart or anything like that. It was, it was a good exercise and just kind of like making a pattern and sticking with it and trying to figure out how it would like flow with all of these different like bulbs I had and stuff so it was helpful that I was looking at a reference image of like an oriental wave as well but I think I 
I really understood what this one was about. And I'm happy with this one too. I'm surprised. I'm happy with all three things I made this video. Um, so, I mean, I mean, that's basically all I've done for this one. It was just a very simple, simple, <laughs> a very simple inked piece. So it doesn't necessarily look like waves. So I put a little question mark at the end just in case, but that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a lovely day and all that jazz.